Hello everyone, welcome to the SQRT channel. In this video, we are going to talk about a problem from Berkeley Mass Tournament from 2022, but this time we are going to have calculus tests. In this problem, we are going to find the sigma that you have here. The sigma that we have is going to start from zero to infinity, and this is for the variable that we have here for n. Inside this sigma, we have roots of n squared plus 3n plus 2 minus roots of n squared plus n minus 1. Let's see how we are going to solve this now. To solve this problem, I'm going to start with using sk for the sigma when sigma starts from 0 and goes to k. For this particular problem, I'm interested in the limit of sk when k goes to infinity. Now let's talk about the solution. First of all, let me focus on the first term of this sigma. I have the root of n squared plus 3n plus 2. I can write it as the root of n plus 1 times n plus 2. For the second one, which is the root of n squared plus n, I'm going to write it as n times n plus 1, and then I need to take a root of this. Now, let's see what I have here. For the first term, I have n plus 1 times n plus 2. For the second term, I have n and n plus 1. Let me distribute the sigma, and then I will have sigma of the first term minus sigma of the second term, plus sigma of negative 1 for n equal to 0 to k. Now, if I want to simplify it a little bit further, the trick here is going to be sigma of n plus 1 times n plus 2 for n equal to 0 to k can be written as sigma of n times n plus 1, but this time n is going to move from 1 to k plus 1. If I do this, then I'm going to end up with sigma of radical n times n plus 1 for n from 1 to k plus 1 minus sigma of radical n times n plus 1 for n from 0 to k and finally plus sigma of negative 1 for 0 to k. Now let's focus on the first two terms. The general term of these two sigmas are identical. The only difference is the range. The first term is going to go from 1 to k plus 1. The second term is going to go from 0 to k. From the second term, I can remove basically the terms from 1 to k. So basically, after considering everything, I'm going to have the last term from the first sigma and the first term from the second sigma. Focusing on that, the last term is going to be radical k plus 1 times k plus 2. And then for n equals to 0, the second sigma is going to be radical 0 times 1, which is going to be zero. Now let's simplify everything. The last sigma is going to be between zero to k, so I have k plus one terms, and then it's going to be negative times k plus one. And we already found what we have for the first two terms. So at the end, the whole expression that I have here for sk is going to be radical k plus 1 times k plus 2 minus k plus 1. Now things are a little bit more exciting. I have s defined as limit of sk for k towards infinity. I already got a simplified version of sk. Let me replace that. I will have limit of radical k plus 1 times k plus 2 minus k plus 1 when k goes towards infinity. Here I have infinity minus infinity. Obviously, that's not good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite 
this value that or this expression that I have here as a fraction. I'm going to use a minus b times a plus b equals to a squared minus b squared. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite this expression as a fraction. The fraction that I'm going to have is basically k plus 1 over radical k plus 1 times k plus 2 plus k plus 1. This is obviously easy to find. The reason that is easy is I'm going to multiply the original term by radical k plus 1 times k plus 2 plus k plus 1. If you do this and then use the identity, you're going to find the first term to the power of 2 minus the second term to the power of 2. Here it's going to be k plus 1 times k plus 2 minus k plus 1 to the power of 2 and if you simplify it, it's going to be k plus 1. Now what I have here is this fraction. In this fraction, I have k plus 1 for top, I have radical k plus 1 times k plus 2 for bottom, first term, and then I have plus k plus 1. When k moves towards the infinity, the top is going to be k. The bottom is going to be radical k squared, which is k, and then I have another k. So I have 2k. So for the top fraction, I have k. For the bottom, I have 2k. So the limit is going to be 1 over 2, and that's our final answer. Thanks for watching the video. If you are interested to see more puzzles, math involved activities, and problems from different math competitions and Olympiads, please subscribe to this channel. I hope to see you in the next video.